Good morning, afternoon, evening, or good night. What, what month is it? Uh, Professor Clifford Treadlemaker here with another episode of Ask and Answer. Now, remember, I'll be doing the asking, and our conductor, David Allen Miller, will be doing the answering. Uh, but, but, speaking of, hello, David. Hello, Professor. How are you? I am unwell. Today, we're going to get to know the orchestra. Well, not, not personally, because they're not here except for Lois and Andrew, who are baking in my kitchen right now cinnamon buns. But we'll talk about them behind their backs. Now, our first question, David, is from Benji. He is age six years old. Now, what is the most popular instrument in the orchestra to play? Well, Professor, it really depends. You see, it's whatever instrument you are playing. If you're playing the trumpet, you're convinced that the trumpet is the most important instrument of all. But if you're playing the cello, you're absolutely convinced that the cello is not only the most important, but the most wonderful, perfect, fabulous instrument in the orchestra. And frankly, that's part of what makes the orchestra so exciting, is that all the instrument players, all the musicians, are trying to prove that they, in fact, have the greatest instrument, so they're always playing the best they can, and it becomes kind of this wonderful competition as they all outdo each other. Wow, well, I thought the most important instrument was the glockenspiel. Now, David, our next question comes from me. Now, what is the least popular instrument? My, my vote is for the accordion. <laughs> well, the accordion is not popular because, as you can tell, because we don't have one in our orchestra. We've pretty much thrown one out. But I don't think there is an unpopular instrument in the orchestra. I think all the instruments have a really important role to play in the orchestra, and we're proud to have all of them in the orchestra. If there's one instrument that seems sort of dopey, it's the one that we talked about recently, the baton, because the baton isn't an instrument. It's just a stick. So without a baton, it wouldn't make that much difference. So the baton, not so important, but the other instruments, all very important. You know, David, you're really making a case for me to replace you. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> now, uh, David, I've heard people talk about first chair violin, second chair horn. Now, what does that mean? Well, it just depends on how expensive their chair is. Actually, that's not the answer at all. First chair just means that that person plays the first part. For example, very often, or almost always, in the violin section, the violins are divided into two parts. And we just call them first violin and second violin. It doesn't mean that first violin is better or second violin is less better. It just means that they have different parts to play. So when someone's sitting in the first violin section, they'll play the first violin part. And if someone's playing in the second violin section, they'll play the second violin part. And the chair just has to do with which order in the section they're sitting. First chair is the first person, second chair is the second person, third chair is the third person, etc., etc. But in the winds and brass, it's a little bit different in that we usually only have two instruments in each section, or sometimes only one instrument in the section. So if there were two French horns, for example, there'd be the first French horn, the first chair French horn, or we also call the principal horn, playing the first part, and the second chair horn playing the second part. So there'd be two different parts. Usually the first part may be a little higher, and the second part may be a little bit lower, but that doesn't in any way mean that the first chair player is any more important than the second chair player. Everybody in the orchestra is equally important, no matter where he or she sits. That's wonderful, David. Now, uh, Susan, Susan, put that harp back. Susan, Su sorry, Susan's in the corner. Now, uh, David, how do you, speaking of Susan, how do you pick people to be in the orchestra? That's a very good question, Professor, and every orchestra I should mention does it a little bit differently. The Little Orchestra Society has a fixed group of instrument, of musicians, who are members of the orchestra and have been, and so they're, they're in it. Usually the way the instrumentalists are picked is with what we call an audition, where they have to, or a tryout, I guess you would call it that. And what's very interesting in orchestras is that usually that audition or tryout is done behind a screen. So for example, uh, an orchestra might have a first flute audition. And you know there are a lot of wonderful flutists. So we put the word out. Flutists from across the country and maybe across the world would all come to audition for that one flute part, that one flute position in the orchestra. 
But because, and we'd have a panel of some of the musicians, and I would sit on the panel with them, and we'd listen to maybe 100 or 200 flutists, and we'd have to judge which one was the best one. But what I love about auditions is that usually these days, almost always, the auditions are done behind a screen. So the musician actually takes off his or her shoes so that we don't know whether they're wearing heavy shoes and they're a man or light shoes and they're a woman. We don't know what, how old they are, what color they are, where they come from, if they're our friend or our enemy, not that we have any enemies. And they come into the room without our being able to see who they are. They stand behind the screen and they play a series of what we call excerpts, short parts from famous pieces of music that are the hardest parts in the whole repertoire and all the pieces the hardest parts for their instrument. And each one plays the same parts. So we may hear them only for five minutes each, and we decide which one we think is best, and then maybe we'll have a second round and a third round until we winnow it down to maybe three people on the flute. And then based on just what we're hearing, we pick the one we like our best, and that one becomes the member of our orchestra. So it's a very competitive, very hard thing to do because there's so many wonderful instrumentalists on every instrument. But it's a very fair system and a great way to uh, get musicians to join one's orchestra. Oh, well, thank you, David. Uh, that's all the time we have for now because Susan's getting into the granola over there. Now, David and I will be back soon with more questions and more answers. And I'm hoping a roller derby. Now, for the Little Orchestra Society, this is Professor Clifford O. Treblemaker reminding you to take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your masks, and if you can, help take care of us by clicking the donate button. Thank you and so long, everybody. Bye.